I'm so excited to have you here and to talk to you. And it's always fun to talk to you. So, <laughs> and laugh. <laughs> so, um, just if you could just tell us a little, what? Thanks for having me. Oh, good. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> tell us a little bit about yourself, where you live, and then um, tell us what your book is about. Okay. Um, well, I live in Western Australia, about two hours south of Perth. Um, it's coming into summer, which is quite lovely. We've had quite a long winter. Um, and I haven't always lived here. I was born in New Zealand. I lived in New Zealand for the first 20 years of my life and not brought up really um, Christian, brought up like baptised when I was a child. You know how you get baptised when you're a child. And um, My family had Christian values, but we didn't go to church. And I remember going to a few Sunday schools. And I remember actually one day going and sitting on the step, on the front step of a church when I was about 12. And, <clears throat> excuse me, ever since then, I've, uh, at being a Christian now, I think about that day because the doors were shut. The, I could hear people singing on the inside and I really, really wanted to go in, but I didn't know if I was going to be in front of a whole lot of people when I walked in the door or, you know, what. So I just sat down on the front step and leaned against the door and listened to them singing. I was only about 12. And, um, yeah, so God, you know, God's got a call on everyone's life and and you can look back at these things and see how he's kind of been there drawing for the whole of my life but I didn't actually become a Christian I was born again when I was 28 yeah yeah so that's pretty much my well a short part of my story <clears throat> yeah awesome. awesome I don't think I've heard that part of no you wouldn't have heard that no oh. <laughs> I only just remembered it a couple of months ago <laughs> oh wow <laughs> so so is your story part of your book or what's your book about no my book is about um oh uh, so i was born again from a new age environment where there's a lot of competition and competing within that sector to be someone um and so I was reading tarot cards and channeling and people were paying me for that. And um, so I came out of that. And so I've, I've got um, quite a prophetic gift. And like, I think we all are prophetic, um, but I've moved in that gift ever since the, from the day I was born again, really. Um, it's been sanctified by the blood of Christ, of course. And, um, but from that, I entered into an environment in the church where I was put on a bit of a pedestal because of the gift that I had and my character couldn't deal with that. I, I was um, operating out of a lot of pride and ego and being ego-driven and works-driven. Um, so for I'm 51 now, so from when I was 28 until 2014, which would have made me... Well, 44, um, I operated in the space of trying to prove myself um, and feeling like I was, I was in ministry, but Jesus wasn't the center of my attention. Um, church was. So uh, working like Martha, you know, like operating out of a spirit of, works and not love and not being in union I, I knew Jesus like I had I've had amazing times over that time with the spirit of Christ and and with the Holy Spirit and with the Father and I you know I was in relationship to a degree but not the way that I know it now so in 2014 I snapped my Achilles tendon at a Graham Cook conference in Auckland <clears throat> and it took me excuse me it took me out of church and into resting because I couldn't drive for six months. I had to totally sit for three months. Um, I'd been an assistant pastor of women's ministry in the church I was in, and then the Lord just took me out of all of it. And, well, I don't, I don't know. People say um, that God doesn't do bad things to change situations, but 
he certainly used it for good. Um, yeah, just laid me out and changed. I, I had to sit with Jesus and just learn about relationship through a whole lot of Graham Cook teaching over that time and haven't really gone back to church as such, like that structure, in a, yeah, for seven years now. I'm heading into the seventh year. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So that's that's probably a huge part of my story. I feel like I was born again again mm-hmm. at that point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so my book is about moving from striving and trying, which was totally what I was in, to a place of resting in relationship. Mm. Yeah. yeah. That's beautiful. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's I would so say- good. I'm coming from a very similar place. I mean, a de- from a different, completely different background and, you know, story, but I can definitely yeah. relate to that, you know, coming out of <clears throat> leadership and in a sense in church and, and, and learning how not to strive. So, yeah. Yeah. I'll, de- I'll definitely be reading your book. <laughs> it's easy well, to slip back into. I think, think it's, so, oh gosh, it's so easy to slip back into. Mm-hmm. One of the chapters in my book that I'm just, I'm, I thought that I'd finished and I need to write this one other chapter that is um, pretty much called The Bridge because, um, can I just talk? Is it okay if I just talk? Sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, the um, entering into that place of rest is something that I've really learned um, from IMC. So that seven years that I was that I came out of church, that was, they were the hardest seven years of my life. Mm. That wasn't easy. That that was a total like, who am I? Mm-hmm. Just laying everything out, everything down, and and trying to figure out who I am in Christ. And and I can imagine that there would be people that would actually give up on Christianity at that stage because that's a pretty a pretty challenging time when you have to put down everything that you think that you are, mm-hmm. everything that you have based your identity on and lay it at the feet of Jesus and then you just are so, like, desolate and hollow and what is this all about and... But Jesus, the love of Christ just coming, just flooding in and and, in points flooding in because you've always got this battle going on in your mind of what you know and what you think you know. And he's trying to get that and grab a hold of it and move it out of your life. And, yeah, um, I don't really know where I was going to go with that, Jen. No, that's good. That's good. (laughs) I think, uh, yeah. Again, I can relate. I think a lot of people can relate to that. Well, you know, we all have stories. We've all got stories and everyone from around the world you can that are, that have been in church and are moving into this bridal sort of way of walking, um, you can kind of nutshell people a little bit to say, well, that's what they've gone through and they would really benefit from this. You know, the Holy Spirit moves the same and is distributing himself the same everywhere and pouring himself out, giving the same message. And I love that too. It makes the world kind of small. Yes. Mm. I have another question for you. So going back to your testimony and what, and you said you came out of the new age um, uh, stuff. And you knew, and you had that gifting. Like I, I've know, I know people that are still in the new age, or they're in the occult, or whatever. And I can tell they have a gifting. You know, that's how they operate. So what, what would you say as far as um, connecting with people that are in in the occult or they're in new age? Um, as far as just being a, a light to them. Um, all right. If you had asked me that 18 months ago, I wouldn't have been able to answer that um, because I felt like God sovereignly moved in my life 
um, people were praying for me. I know who they were and um, not actually people that I knew but a church because uh, they knew who I was. <laughs> um, but now um, with the things that have been released into our knowledge about um, how the new age has, like I knew this but I didn't know how to language it, but the new age has stolen from God what belongs to God and they're using words that we should really be using. Um, and I used to flip out as a religious churchgoer about the word meditation. I would not, you know, meditation is something that New Agers do. Um, and frequency, uh, the word frequency would be, oh, yeah, that's a bit of a New Agey word, but actually we all, you know, we're learning about our bodies vibrating at particular frequencies and if we put certain foods in our body, then we lower our the frequency that we vibrate at if we you know, oh, all sorts of different things that I haven't really gone into but I'm hearing about. Um, so anyway, there's lots of common ground with the New Ager. We've got lots of common ground with New Agers because they are Christ conscious. Mm. They know what the light looks like. I used to know what the light looks like. I had a bookcase. I had this little altar set up in this room and all these candles around, you know, you do your thing in there. And this bookcase had, I don't know how, I don't know why I even had it. It wasn't even mine. Um, a white Bible in the bookcase and amongst all these Wiccan books and, you know, every demonic thing you could possibly think of, there was a white Bible. And one evening that Bible started glowing in my bookcase I remember it like I've got a photo of it in my memory. It actually started glowing this golden light and I was just transfixed by it for about 15 minutes, but I wouldn't touch it. I was too scared to pick it up. I wouldn't touch it. So there's stuff that is going on in our world now, in a Christian world, in our Christian world, um, that will really equip us very well to speak to people who are in new age. Don't be afraid of them because they're seekers. They're all looking for the light. Um, and, yeah, kind of I guess that's my answer to that. Is that good? That's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. That's, it's great to hear from someone that's that knows Jesus and that's been there. And that's yeah. Cool. Yeah. And how I, I did think um, that it was, I was quite, I felt quite superior to Christians before I was a Christian. I've just got this biggest eagle flying really low over my neighbor's place. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, That's worth uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. um, There was a revival tent went up across the road from us and I, and I was in New Age. And I went over there holding my amethyst crystal in my hand, thinking that I was all superior and great. And, mm. and um, yeah, and mm. then God just hit me and just called me out actually an uh, Aboriginal pastor came out the front and said there's someone here with sore teeth I want you to come out God wants to heal you and uh, I knew that he was going to come and get me <laughs> I really felt like he was he probably wouldn't know but I really felt like he was going to come and get me out of my seat and then he goes is that you and I said yeah that's me and he said by the power of the Holy Spirit and he pointed at me and I just went flat out on the ground it was light when I went down. It was daytime, evening, daytime, and it was dark when I got up. So I don't know how long, wow. but I just lay there crying and white light just washing through me. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It was pretty huge. Changed mm -hmm. my life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> yes. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. 